Hi everyone, I'm Jenny, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to easily transfer your R files from RStudio Cloud to your local computers. We're recording this video specifically for students from Newington College because Tehila Ostrovsky and I had the pleasure to teach these students an Intro to R and Data Science course. However, this video should be useful for anyone who's interested in the process of transferring their work from the cloud to their local computers. In the course we taught, we actually created a website that I have opened up here. And this is the homepage, so this is the website. And I have on the, web, on the website, we have a Getting Started tab with some information to essentially get started using R and RStudio. So in the course, we pretty much consistently used RStudio Cloud, but now we really want to transfer all of our files onto our local computers. And the first step to do that is to make sure that you have both R and RStudio installed and downloaded. So I have some instructions here. And so as you can see, one of the first things you want to do if you haven't already is make sure that you install R from the CRAN website. And I have included a few links here so you can go to the CRAN website or you can go directly to the links for either Windows or Mac. So for example, I'm on a Windows computer. If I just go to this link, you can just click straight here and it will download the latest R version. And you really wanna make sure not only to install R, but also to download R Studio. So we can do that the same thing by going to the link here and just downloading the free R Studio desktop. So it's as easy as that. And then because I've already done this, I'm not going to go through and install or download them again, but you can double check to make sure that you have everything installed just by checking to make sure that you have R and R Studio. So I can see that I have both of them on my computer. Okay, great. So the next thing that we need to do is go and open up our R Studio Cloud. So I'm gonna log in. And now you want to navigate to this workspace that you have the files that you're interested in. So for me, I'm gonna to go to my new Scribo workspace. And I have it organized so I can see all of my projects that I'm working on. So let's say I just finished my final project and now I wanna download all of the files from the final project so I can have them safely saved on my computer. Now this is really important because our Studio Cloud only has a limited number of hours that you can use for free. So we really wanna make sure that you have all the files so you continue your projects on your own and you can spend as much time as you want working on your own desktop. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the project and now this might take a few seconds. Sometimes it takes a little bit to load. And, and now I can see I have all of the files that I've been working on over here in the file pane. And it's actually quite simple. All we wanna do is select all of the files that we want to transfer. So you can go through and manually select whichever files you want, or I think it's easier. I'm just going to check this box and it will select all of the files. And now if you go to this gear button, it says more, we can go and click export. Okay, so I'm going to just, and you can see it will export it to a zip file. So I'm going to call this final project. And now click download. And we can see it's loading. It might, and now we have our zip file. So that's really great. And that's everything that we need to do for this project. But please keep in mind that you need to do this for all of your different projects. So for example, I'll go back here and maybe I also want to get all of the files from the workshop number one. So I'll just go through the same process one more time just to show you. And again, we'll just select all of the files and export them to another zip file. And I clicked enter and now we can see we have both of the zip folders have been downloaded. Okay, so that's really all we need from our Studio Cloud. And really important 
this next step, you want to make sure to save your files in a place where you know they'll be located so it's easy to access later. So I'm going to create a folder just on my desktop called R files. Now for you, I recommend putting it somewhere else besides your desktop, but just for this tutorial, I'll put it here. Okay, I'll just put it over here. And now if I go to my downloads, we can see we have our zip file here. I'm going to just extract, extract it. And I'll extract this one. Okay, and now that I have both of these, I'm going to move them into my R files. Okay, so just to show you exactly what I did, now I have my folder R files with both of my separate projects and all of the files saved on my local computer. So it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And now just for to double check to make sure everything's working, we can go into one of the projects and open it up. So remember, we created, or within our Studio Cloud, it actually created these .r proj. So we have this little R cube and it opens up a project. So you can see just from me clicking on that file, we've opened up our final project here. Okay, and this looks great. This is our R Studio on our computers. And now it should look very familiar to the cloud because that's, it's, it's the same. We're just using the desktop as opposed to the cloud now. And whenever you open up R, it will tell you what version you're working with and a little bit more information. And so just a few things to get set up, just in case you need some reminders. The first thing I personally like to work on a darker background. So you can easily change the appearance of our studio by going to tools, global options and appearance. So this is the default setting. And you can see it even says default. And I like working in the dark. So I like tomorrow night blue. Now, if I scroll down, I can click apply. And just like that, now I have my dark background. I love that. OK, and now let's just open up an R markdown just to show, just to remind you how everything works. So I'm just going to create a blank untitled R markdown file. And we have our default script. And for example, if we run, we can we have our code chunks, so we can run a chunk of code. And here, I just wanted to point out that when you install our studio for the first time, there are a lot of default settings. So I personally like having everything only print in my console. I find it a little bit distracting to have it printing out inline. So to do this, you can also easily change this. But this is a personal preference, so it's totally up to you whether you want to adjust this or not. So if we go back to Tools and Global Options, now we can go to R Markdown. And here are some of the basic settings. So for me, I like to uncheck this box. So you can see it says Show Output Inline for all R Markdown documents. So I've just unchecked that. And while I'm here, the other thing that I tend to change is I like to show my output in the viewer pane. So this, for example, when you go and knit your RMD files, you can either have it set to appear in a brand new window or appear in the window pane, in the viewer pane, and then it will pop up in this section over here. You can see it says viewer and you can see your document right here. So I like it to be in my viewer pane and I've unchecked this box here and I'll click apply. Apply OK. So now if I close out of that, if I run the chunk again, you can see it only prints in the console and nothing in line. And that's everything for now. Oh, I almost forgot. The last thing is remember that even if you've installed packages on our Studio Cloud, because you've installed R and R Studio for the first time on your computer, you will have to install packages again. But as always, it's a one time thing. So you'll have to install a package once and then you can just load in and call the libraries within all, each of your scripts that you write. Okay, so hopefully this was helpful. 
Thank you for watching and please feel free to write below, um, leave a comment if you have any questions.